NGOs are helping facilitate the border invasion. It's February 22nd, 2024, and these are your headlines. Ken Paxton, the Republican Attorney General of Texas, is going after a non-governmental organization for allegedly stoking the crisis at the U.S. southern border. In a 65-page legal filing publicized this week, Paxton's office accused Annunciation House of El Paso of facilitating unlawful entry into the United States, harboring illegal aliens, human smuggling, and the operation of a stash house, all crimes. Annunciation House, which has operated several shelters in El Paso for years, describes itself on its website as a Catholic nonprofit intent on aiding illegal aliens, quote, through hospitality, advocacy, and education. Paxton said the chaos at the southern border has created an environment where NGOs funded with taxpayer money from the Biden administration facilitate astonishing horrors, including, including human smuggling. The first hearing on the OAG's lawsuit here is currently scheduled for February 28th. Judge Francisco Dominguez of the 205th Judicial District Court in El Paso County is overseeing both Annunciation House's initial claim and the OAG's counterclaim. Texas Scorecard has previously reported earlier this month on Paxton's criticism of the Biden administration for a proposed border security measure that, among other provisions, sought to provide over $1 billion to NGOs like Annunciation House. A citizen-led organization is calling for a prayer vigil over the University of Houston's decision to host a pro-abortion statue on its campus. As recently reported by Texas Scorecard, the taxpayer-funded university planned to display the sculpture on its campus beginning later this month. And you have to see this thing to believe it. The 18-foot-tall statue, which resembles the pagan demon Ashtaroth and depicts a naked woman with goat horns for hair and tentacles for arms, also has a lace collar around the neck. It's intended, they say, as a tribute to now-deceased pro-abortion Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Now, the statue was scheduled to debut at the end of this month. However, the statue was erected on the campus before the scheduled date, and what Citizens Defending Freedom spokesperson Dan Thomas described as an attempt to preempt potential protests. Now, Citizens Defending Freedom says they are an organization that provides the tools and support needed to empower citizens to defend their freedom and liberty and place local government back into the hands of the people. The group's second now, it's actually their second intercessory prayer vigil, is scheduled for February 26 at 11 a.m. The first was held on February 13th. Texas Right to Life has also launched their own petition against the idol. Are you worried about your kid's future? You should be. I'm Charles Blaine with Texas Tomorrow. This is a show where we're going to talk about the issues and the people that are pushing the policies that concern your family, your home, and your kids. Catch Texas tomorrow, every Thursday. And lastly, in an apparent violation of state laws against public employees electioneering with taxpayer funds, a Denton Independent School District principal emailed employees encouraging them to vote in the Republican primary election, decrying school choice and promising, quote, coverage at work for them to vote. The latest email sent to all staff at Borman Elementary by Principal Jesus Lujan was sent to Texas Scorecard following reports of another Denton ISD administrator, Lujan's wife, Lindsay, engaging in similar tactics on the taxpayer's dime. The Texas Election Code prohibits public employees from using public resources to electioneer, while the Texas Penal Code prohibits voter coercion. Both offenses are Class A misdemeanors. In a 2018 opinion about Texas election code, about the Texas election code, Attorney General Ken Paxton said that school districts are a political subdivision and therefore, under the code's provision that states an officer of a public, of a political subdivision may not knowingly spend or authorize the spending of public funds for political advertising. Likewise, his wife's emails, or like his wife's emails, Mr. Lujan's email tells employees that the district, quote, will provide coverage for all Borman employees, employees at the school, to go and vote in the Texas Republican primary. Our goal, he said, is 100% of Borman employees voting because it is that important. And the Attorney General's office has emphasized concern over electioneering in schools in recent elections and 
encouraging those who see potential violations to report them. The AG's office recently set up a complaint form specifically for school electioneering. However, Paxton has highlighted in regards to the original email that, unfortunately, the Court of Criminal Appeals, he says, incorrectly decided that the Texas Attorney General cannot prosecute criminal election offenses. He went on to say that Dade Phelan and the Republican House of Representatives refused to fix this issue during session. This means my office cannot criminally prosecute this type of activity or even large-scale voter fraud that changes the outcome of elections in this state. For more of today's stories, head to texasscorecard.com. 